right, so we're just going to move a few things, guys. I've got Grant, my Noongar mate Grant here. Grant's just with, with a few things today. And uh, so what we're going to do is move uh, this pond here, Grant. So it's pretty easy, mate. Yeah. So what we need to do is move this pond here. Yep. Now what we need to do is this big log here. Yeah. We need to spin it up right just for the time being over here. Oh yeah. Pretty heavy. Stay there, Grant. That's yeah. good there, mate. So I'll show you something, Grant. Yeah. I don't think this is a. Uh, I don't know. You ever seen the Witchetty Grubs? Is this one here? See this, Grant? Yep. So you would have seen those. Yeah, seen. So either the Witchetty Grub, a young. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's three there. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know if this one's a native species to Australia, but because it's actually the, I did a bit of research yesterday. Yep. It's, you know, the black dung beetle. Yeah. Yep. That's it's actually the larvae or the grub, the black Long dung that. beetle. Yeah. So. Because the real witchetty grubs are pretty big. Yeah. And they but they don't have the there. big witchetty grubs around this area, do they? They're, uh, they're the, a bit bigger than them. Probably about our finger size. Yeah, take your glasses off, right? Yeah. So can see you. So, All right. So and they're mainly in the balga tree, you know, the black boys. Okay. Yeah. The balga tree. Yep. The Xanotheria, I think yeah. it's called. I call them the black boy tree. Yep. Do you call them the black boy or the? Yeah, I do. Yep. So Grant's Grant's a Noongar, guys, and um, due to the way we live these days, they people don't like calling them the black boy tree because of racism or whatever. You'll have to. Have you ever found the proper widgety grubs? Yeah, Grant? we found them around here, mainly in yep. the balga tree. Whereabouts in the balga you or the, the black boy tree? Are they? The, when they start dying off, yep. they get right in the. Once you break them down, you'll find them. Yeah. In the moist. And they're a nice big. Yeah, they pretty probably grow about our thumb. Okay. To our size, yeah. And the ones up in the Pilbara would be a lot bigger, wouldn't oh, they? Oh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, that's just a witchetty grub, guys, a bardy grub or the black dung beetle grub. Uh, so I don't think the black dung beetle's native to Australia. It might no. be, but, but yeah, one's been squashed. But anyway. All right, so thanks, right? Yep. Um, have you ever eaten mate? Yeah. What do they taste like? Um, they taste a bit like chicken. Okay, yeah, everything, yeah, everything, you know, everything tastes like chicken. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, what we need to do now is move this one here, Grant. Yep. So, what I'm going to do is build the, the soil around here. Right, eh? Yeah. Yep. So where's that going to go? Just here. There's tap holes in this one, too, so we've got to be careful. I 
maybe next time we come up a bit to the... Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to do with that? Oh, I can do that one myself, yep. right? Well, what about this kitchen sink, do you reckon? Yeah, we'll sort that out now, eh? I reckon we'll be able to try it. Yeah. yeah. Weighs a fair bit. So which way are we going to take it, Bill? Oh, uh, we'll have to flip it over, mate, I think. Do you know what I mean? End over end or something? Yeah, yep. So what we're going to do now, guys, is try and move this concrete sink. I'm going to turn that into a frog and tadpole pond. So we're going to... I don't know if we're going to be able to lift it, Grant. It's going to weigh about 150 kilos. Yeah. Um, so we'll so just put we, it end over end here. Yeah, if we just put it here. Yep. And we roll it over there. Yeah. Just move it. Just All the way right, we'll do it, Bill. All right. You film me when I'm... Uh, just hold the camera. Don't press any of the buttons, but yep. I'll bring it over. You just lift it yourself, mate. Just see if you think we can lift it. It's. All right, if we put it down. Yep. And then we just. You just okay, yeah, we might be able to put it up. Yep. So it probably weighs about 150 kilos, I reckon. Yeah. Oh, let's try. Sophie! Here! Cool. Um, what do you reckon? Are we going to do it? it up that way? Yep. You reckon? Oh. Literally, or? Yeah, flip it up that way. Yep. Uh, hold on. You push it. Yep. Flip it around. Yeah, no, oh, hold on. Wait, just this one. Yep. Sophie, here! Good girl. And we'll just flip it over. I'll get it under there. Yep. Um, one side, I mean, what if we flip it up there? Yep. And then lay it back down there. Okay, which way? Up, move it that way. Towards me? Yeah. Alright, flip that end up. You want to go up your end? Yep. Alright.
Are you going to be a joint reckoning or not? Um, we'll give it a go, eh? While we're here together, we'll take it, yeah, why not? Um, all right, yeah, just got a couple, we, of, couple of milk crates. What if we take that one away? Yep. And rest that one. Oh, all right, that's a good idea. Yep. Push it towards me. Wait, wait. Oh, right, you've got to stand up right more. There you go. Stand up right towards me. Go towards you. This yep. way. You tweet you up. Yep. And you rest against that concrete. Yep. Oh, that's working. Yeah, that's pretty firm. be centre, that's all. Yeah, yep. We'll move this side out here a bit. So that our belt holes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, you reckon it's not going to collapse? Uh, no, I think it's pretty good there. All right. Yeah. Stand, but if I lift a little bit, yeah, just straighten that leg up, we'll all right. Hold it, right. I'm going to push it in here. Bring it down towards me a little bit so it's centered with this wagon wheel toward you. Yep, three, one, two, three. Yep. Yep, beautiful. Oh, that's good, mate. Yep. Beautiful. To be you want to straighten that leg back up? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful, yeah. It's gonna be all, all gonna be nice yeah. when you finish. Yeah, yeah. All this hay is gonna be camouflaged in the nice rocks. Yeah. We're gonna have all beautiful logs. Yep. Going around the outside. Awesome. And native all these grasses. Yeah. Yep. So no, you're gonna look beautiful, Bill. Oh shit.
Yep, so anyway, right, so what we're going to do, yep, all of these are going to plant out the front of your business. Yep. In uh, beautiful ceramic yep. pots. Yeah, yep. Anyway, awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming up, mate, and giving no me a hand. Bill. Yeah, good man. Oh, you're all right. Uh, so anyway, guys, just let you know before Grant goes, he's got an Aboriginal tourism business. in one called Woody Aboriginal Cultural Tours. And we're going to set up all beautiful native grasses and native trees and bushes outside the front of his shop. And it's going to look beautiful, guys, in ceramic pots like this. Lots of nice ceramic pots, maybe like this with water grasses, like the typha grass here, Grant. Yep. And the bulrush. Uh, so, just before you go, you know the... Um, you know, you'd know a bit about this, wouldn't you? Your dad would make fire. Yeah, yep. Yep. Those were pretty fibre, you know? Yeah, fibers, and, and weaving baskets. Yeah, and they'd, this sort of stuff here yep. ignites pretty quick. Yeah, good for uh, fire lighting. Yeah. I don't know if you know, Grant, I'm pretty sure that you can eat this like a corn on the cob. It wouldn't be surprised, Bill. Yeah. But I know the old girls, they carried it. Yep. Because it smouldered. Yeah. And when the men went around, yep. that, that would be a quick way of... Igniting a fire, yeah, with the wind, yep. So that saved them, yep. And you know, the white root is a, like a potato, yeah, type yep. starch, yep. A lot of the Noongar people would eat the white root, yep, for a potato source of like potato, or yeah, they you know, obviously, no potatoes grew in Australia back then, but the same vitamins, possibly, I don't know, vitamin D or something, yep. No. And, but anyway, I appreciate that. No worries, yep. So when you come up next time, I'll get you to give me a hand to put this big log back. Yeah, we'll put, yep. So what I'm going to do here now is just cover, yep. round it off yep. around the base of this tree here. And, uh, yeah, continue going for the next couple of hours. Yeah. No worries, Bill. All right, mate. No worries, Yeah, thanks for talking to me. I'll better catch. Yeah, you're yeah. busy. Yep. Um, so Grant's going to get me a nice load of uh, the uh, blue metal. Blue metal. Yeah. All right, mate. No worries, thanks, Bill. So we'll just bring up. that angle grinder back when you finish will, with it. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, buddy. All right, yep. see you, mate. Yep. Oh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, so Grant's got his own Facebook. I'll just get a photo of your um, Woody Aboriginal Tours logo here, guys, just so people know. They can look it up on the internet. So this is Grant's ute. Uh, just he's, uh, it's on Facebook, Woody Aboriginal Cultural Tours, Woody Tours. And Grant's a Noongar man from Dombriong, West Australia. <laughs> Alright guys, so we'll just continue going. So that looks awesome. So what we're going to do is I'll show you. So what we're going to do guys is turn this also into a beautiful frog and tadpole habitat. All right. And uh, it needs, just needs to be repaired. It's got a few cracks in it. A few hairline cracks. Um, and it's a beautiful old concrete sink, guys. I've got memories, believe it or not. I've got a memory like an elephant, guys. Memories of being bathed in one of these when I was a kid. Happened to a lot of our country Australian kids and probably even city kids being bathed in the old concrete laundry sinks as kids. Because a lot of our, back in the old days, guys, that's all they had, the old concrete sinks. So it's a Tyndale. Made in Hay Street, Perth. Hay Street is one of the main streets in the capital city of Perth, Western Australia. So, uh, just a beautiful old Australian concrete sink. But before we go, guys, well, I'm going to take you out the back and just show you exactly what my plans are for this area here. Okay. And what we're going to do today is use that saw down there and just round it off. Round, round it off. At the base of this tree down there and we'll go at the back now guys and I'll show you what my plans are so what this area is going to eventually look like in the next hopefully in the next few weeks 
Okay. Go on, Sophie. So we'll go back inside and we'll take you out the back. And this beautiful grass is probably going to get planted as well, guys. This is another native water grass. This will probably get put in the sink in the uh, sorry not in the sink in that big plastic insert as well just got to be careful of putting too much water grass in there guys because it sucks up the water especially during summer you can lose basically half of the water in one hot summer's day due to evaporation from the roots of the native water grasses and uh this one here is what's going going to get planted this is a rubbish dump find a native grass, I'm sure the species name, but I'd say it'd be pretty old guys, about 50 years of age I reckon this, these three native grasses are. So, so we'll go inside quickly guys and I'll show you at the back what my plans are. Come on Sophie, come on. Just walking through my house. I'll go at the back now and I'll show you what my plans are for this front frog tadpole habitat is. Okay, and right here guys is a little trial camera what I've just set up today to try and get footage of a mistletoe bird drinking water. So I've got this beautiful little tiny mistletoe bird what comes and drinks water out of here. Trying to get footage of it. So basically that big pile of dirt, what you've seen me working on the last three episodes, guys, we're gonna have beautiful logs surrounding surrounding it. Logs and rocks, but mainly logs like this. But with the old jam tree logs or jam tree fence posts. These are old jam tree fence posts. And we're going to have logs like this and I'll source all these logs probably out bush from fallen trees. I'll use my chainsaw and cut off big long lengths of logs. And it'll be kind of like this guys as well. Surrounding the outskirts of the uh, big pile of dirt where the big plastic insert is. It'll look like this and uh, have it worn, be covered in all nice native grasses native iris so we'll show you some beautiful native iris down here what i rescued from the wage and rubbish dump about probably four months ago so this be perfect for frogs and tadpoles sorry frogs so it's all going to look like this kind of Guys, and this is juvenile native iris. Well, I can just dig out right now and go and transplant it. It's ready to be taken out of the soil, guys. Just little tiny juveniles. These ones here are Port Jackson fig trees. So this is the Port Jackson fig tree here, guys. This one here. I know I always talk about it, but this beautiful tree here, 40, about 40. 43 years of age and hopefully we can camouflage the pond liner like this with beautiful rocks and it'll look like this eventually and uh, hopefully we'll get frogs and heaps of you know a few different species of frogs breeding I've got heaps of frogs in my yard already so yeah we're going to turn my front yard into a paradise guys it's getting there and here's some more concrete sinks what I need to fix and turn into ponds so these are concrete sinks as well all rubbish dump finds guys what people are throwing out where they're doing their house renovations.
and these are beautiful minerals, Australian minerals that a bloke in Wajan gave me. Clary, he gave me a beautiful selection of all different types of minerals and this is a deadly blue asbestos guys. What people die from, mesothelioma. It killed my uncle, my uncle worked on the mines in Whitnome. See all the fibres? That's the deadly stuff, what people die from guys, mesothelioma. All it takes is to breathe in one of those tiny fibres into your lungs and about 30 years later you know, you, you could, I'm not saying you will, but you could end up getting mesothelioma or asbestosis. And this was sourced from the town of Whitnome, Whitnome. I've actually been there guys, Whitnome. And it's called blue asbestos, this is blue asbestos. And there's other different types of rocks here as well guys, maybe a few fossils. It's all been concreted into a concrete slab. I think that one's called Tiger Stone possibly. I'm unsure. There's another piece of blue asbestos. So it kills tens of thousands of people every year guys. So back in the old days, before I go on guys, just to let you know that the kids would play in big poles of blue asbestos dust at Whitnoon. There's photos of kids playing in it like playing in sand pits. But instead they were playing on the big poles of uh, deadly blue asbestos. And, uh, you know, making, just playing in it, throwing poles of blue asbestos like snowballs. And all those kids are now in their 60s and 70s now and a lot of them are dying and a lot of them already have died from mesothelioma. It's not just from that guys, it's from when people renovate their houses. They'll breathe in the asbestos dust and it'll kill them eventually. I've done heaps of videos on asbestos. Alright guys, so we'll head out and start doing a bit of shoveling. Before I go, I'll just quickly have a look at my little bobtail habitat. I fed them today some strawberries. There's one down there. Just there. There's another one just there. I can't really see it very well, but... The chicken wires are there to protect them from predators. There's another one down there. All right, guys. So that's enough. We'll go back inside. I tried to do a video before, but apparently I had the screen upside down. Anyway, so. I'm going to try and turn my front yard looking like this with either old jam tree posts like this one or just normal normal logs surrounding the base and it's all going to be camouflaged in rocks as well so we'll head back out there everyone and Appreciate everyone watching guys, so and I'm making some bread at the moment. So I try and make my own bread. This is my beautiful crappy house. It's nothing special guys, but it does the job. Grateful for what I've got. Taking a risk today guys, I should go and put the mask on Sophie.
I'm just going to go inside and grab that mask, guys, and just grab my uh, water. All right, so I'm going to be a couple of minutes. You stay there, Sophie. You stay there. Good girl. Well, I'm going to be about two or three minutes, guys. I've just got to grab my mask. She should stay there. If she's a good trained dog, she'll stay there, guys. Stay there. You stay there. Stay there. Stay there, good girl. Down, down, stay there. Oh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm back, Sophie's not a very good trained dog, is she? All right, so what we're going to do now, guys, is I'm going to put this mask on Sophie, and I'll tell you why I have to put this, keep on putting this mask on. Come, Sophie, come here. Come here. Come on, over here. Come here, come here. Good girl, sit. Good girl. Sit 
So guys, the reason being I have to continue doing this is because if I get out of the habit of not doing it, then one day something's going to happen. So as much as I hate putting it on, guys, even though there's really no risk, I just don't want to make the silly mistake of one day not putting this mask on safely and then for eating a dog bait or getting poisoned. Um, I just can't afford to, you know, I can't be slack on doing this, guys. I bought the mask for a reason, you know. It cost me $90. It's pretty cheap. But I just cannot slacken off with not putting our mask on Sophie. So the mask is good. Sophie doesn't mind, guys. I mean, she can breathe through it. She can see through it. She just can't eat through it. She can still drink water from it, but she can't eat. So it's a really good thing, guys. So it's called Outfox. Outfox. Uh, I've done videos on it before. If you go to my live video section, you'll see it. So like I say, guys, I just cannot slacken off. As much as Sophie might not like it, but she's used to it, um, I just cannot slacken off and not, you know, it has to be on her whenever she's outside. And it doesn't really bother her. Alright guys, so all I'm going to do today, guys, is just uh, fill in this gap here. Alright, and I've got more soil at the back. Um, so, what I'm going to do first, guys, is uh, use this gravel here. So this pile of gravel here, we're going to put the first layer of that. That's just excess gravel. I can't even remember what it's from, but uh, we're going to put that on the base of this tree then we're going to cover it in beautiful soil okay so and if you didn't see me before guys I had my Noongar mate Grant and we just lifted up this huge concrete sink we weighs 150 kilos and we're going to turn that into a beautiful frog and tadpole habitat as well. And I just need to repair it. It's got a few hairline cracks. But that'll be easier to fix. Um, I'll just go inside and quickly show you what I'm going to repair it with, guys. It's just inside the front of my house. I think it's the same thing. It might not be the same stuff. I don't think it is actually. No. No, it's similar to this. But I can't use this otherwise it'll poison the frogs with a special pond liner. Anyway. So let's get started guys. So probably maybe two or three more episodes, maybe four, five episodes of building this, turning this into a paradise. It's not going to happen overnight, guys, but we're getting there. Well, it's a beautiful day today, um, 2nd of May 2023, and it's about 20 degrees. We're only uh, four weeks away from winter, and tomorrow it's going to be 26 degrees Celsius, so a pretty warm day. Well, I'm just going to turn the camera around, guys. I just don't want to get my neighbour's house. Don't want to upset my neighbour. Just so you can see me, what I'm doing. 
might to worry out the houses on the opposite side of the road guys because they're government rental houses for school teachers so school teachers live in the other houses opposite my house they're rentals whereas the other houses on this side of the road are all private residences and I don't want to film those ones and upset the neighbors all right so we'll be back in one minute guys Right guys, and just before I start, this is the stuff for waterproofing ceramic pots, like this one here. So you can see the blue down the bottom there. So it basically it's lined with that. It's also got concrete on the bottom, so I've mixed my own concrete, just normal concrete. Once the concrete had set, I let it set for about probably seven days to dry, just to cover the, the, the drainage holes in the bottom of the ceramic pots, same with this one here so once again concrete and then once the concrete had dried, dried I sealed it with this stuff here and let it set for around seven days again, another seven days and that's what it looks like it's really good stuff but you can get it in different varieties uh, this is for ceramic pots water features pools ponds so it's aquarium safe frog and tadpole safe and it comes in different brand names as well so you can get this from your normal hardware store guys so uh, so this here is what we're going to use to repair this concrete sink possibly with concrete as well we'll make a little mixture of concrete to fill in the hairline fractures and then we'll paint strips of the blue this stuff in these hairline cracks here just to make it all waterproof guys and then once it's all set we'll fill it up with beautiful fresh water I'll we'll put some nice native bulrush grasses in there and we'll go up bush and catch some tadpoles and uh, make it look like this guys of all native bulrush and these are old sheep troughs old concrete sheep troughs this one here has got a slight leak in it but once again I need to fix with this stuff it's got a hairline crack in it as well. So I've got three of these troughs. There's another one up the end here. Just down there. And these are full of uh, western or bleating toadlets, little tiny tadpoles, what turn into tiny frogs about the size of your little fingernail.
So we're getting there guys. So let's get started. Just shoving this all again today basically. Could be another hour left of shoveling soil. If you're wondering why I'm wearing the same clothes, guys, I just wear them for two or three days and then I wash them, you know. So it's not about being dirty or anything, guys. It's just getting a good use out of my clothes and I don't know. I just wear them for about two or three days and I chuck them in the washing machine. Tomorrow's washing day for me.
Alright guys, so it's gravel. I'm just going to smooth it out. So, like I say, guys, so all around the edge of this built-up soil area is going to be all nice logs. So it's all going to be thrown into logs, the native iris grass, native bulrush grasses, some uh, little, not shrubs, native shrubs to the Dumbuyong area, maybe some little trees. Got to be very careful, guys, because this is a... The main power line runs directly across to my house, so I don't want any trees uh, interfering with that line. And my sewage line runs directly, sorry not my sewage line, my copper water line, where this thing is here. So basically where this line's going now, maybe a little bit over this way a bit more, on a different angle. So I can't have the soil sitting on top of this, above this string. Okay, so otherwise if I get a leak in my copper pipe, my copper water pipe, what's buried about probably three or four feet under the ground, um, I've got to dig up all the trees and rocks and logs. So I've got to be very careful. Okay, so, and this is a copper water pipe for, the, for this tap here and also for the mains uh, house water. So I've just got to be very careful guys of uh, putting soil and trees and grasses directly over the top of the copper water pipe. So I had a leak around probably two or three years ago guys and it's a pain. Whenever you get a leak, you've got to literally dig a trench and find where the, where the leak is. And there's about 10 meters of uh, copper water pipe underneath the ground but anyway hopefully I don't get another leak for a while so what I'm going to do now guys is see this soil here right on the edge I'm going to uh, it's a little bit too far out so whenever I park my truck here um, I'm literally stepping on top of the soil to access the left hand side of my truck so we're going to remove some of this soil and then we'll put some more soil here after we've done that. This is a beautiful crowbar guys, I found out the Wage and rubbish dump. And another one. Another rubbish dump find. Everything I use is rubbish dump finds. Even the wheelbarrows rubbish don't find. And so is this beautiful shovel. A rubbish don't find, guys. I think someone accidentally threw this out by mistake. They're unloading their trailer and they left it behind. And I, I grabbed it, guys. There's other. If I didn't grab it, someone else would. Just a beautiful shovel or spade.
Right, now we're just going to grab some soil here. And kind of round it off a little bit.
It's always so guys, always finding plastic. All right, well, we're kind of getting there, guys. This is my washing up area for washing rubbish dump finds, pots and pans, plastic containers. I've been a bit lazy lately, guys. I need to get out of here and finish cleaning up a few things, just to tidy up the area. But just a homemade kitchen sink, what I made. I found the sink and I found the desk, and I just made it into a outdoor washing area I've got another one out the front of my the back of the yard too but yeah it comes in handy all right guys so what we're going to do now is try and put some more soil on top of this pond liner I'm hoping that uh there's not too much sticking out guys do you know what I mean see how it's all sticking out it's a pretty deep pond I can't really go much deeper unless I dig into the actual soil under the ground. So it's basically sitting on the gravel at the moment. So I can't, I can go deeper, but what I'm worried about is it's still being too high above the ground. And when I lay the rocks on top of it, uh, it's not, it's just going to look unusual. But we'll keep going if worst case scenario if I've got to dig it back out I can just lift the pond straight out of the ground It'll lift out of the ground and it'll still leave the hole in the ground um, But anyway, we'll just what we're going to do now is just put more soil around the edge to cover up that cover up this section here Hopefully it'll work out It's more or less just this area here, guys, is what I'm worried about, because there's a steep decline. But we should be able to camouflage it with logs and so forth, guys, so it's not even visible. Put some logs right here. And rocks, flat rocks sticking on top. That bird's a 28 parrot. That one, the 28 parrot. Or the uh, ring neck, the ring neck parrot. There it goes. And as I always say, guys, me and my mate Simo used to eat them when we were kids. We'd get them with our Shanghai or our gings, kill them, pluck them, and 
cook them in, uh, put some butter inside their stomachs. So we gut them, take all their guts out, put a little stick of butter inside them, wrap them in aluminium foil, L foil, and put them over a hot charcoals. And we'd have ourselves a little tiny roast chicken or a roast parrot. And we'd also kill them for bait for catching freshwater crayfish. So right here's where I'm going to get worried, guys. Let's tell you if there's a sense it's going to fall down. But it's all fixable. Just a bit too steep. Wherever I'm digging, guys, I'm always finding bones. One of the human bones. I have found some strange looking bones out bush digging before. They look like human bones, but they might also be kangaroo bones. But I think this one might be a, I don't know. I'll put it in my pocket, I will send it away for forensic testing. It's got a cut mark there, guys. In the cut mark. Hacksaw mark possibly. It's not just bones I find either guys when I'm digging find a lot of human teeth as well. A lot of human teeth when I'm digging. Not in my yard, mainly when I'm digging for old antique bottles I come across human teeth. It's unusual guys but I think they're probably Homemade dental, because when I'm digging, I'm digging up the old rubbish dumps. 
and it's probably just people back in the old days doing homemade dental treatment, pulling out their own teeth, and uh, possibly even kids' baby teeth. Uh, no, not so much baby teeth, it's mainly adult teeth I find, but mainly uh, I'd say homemade dental work, just ripping up the teeth. It could also be teeth of Aboriginal people prior to white settlement. Um, because uh, wherever I find the teeth, guys, I always find a lot of beautiful Aboriginal stone artifacts. So here's a perfect example, guys. This is a beautiful stone tool. What I found out the old Dombiong rubbish dump is made out of volcanic pumice. It's probably come from a volcano in Antarctica, possibly. It's floated on top of the water. Um, and I don't know, hundreds of years ago, thousand years ago, it was found off the coast of southern West Australia, possibly in the Albany region by a full-blooded Noongar Aboriginal and it's ended up all the way in Dombiong, 250 kilometres away. And this beautiful rock here, guys, would be worth thousands, probably even $10,000 probably, guys. It's, I've never ever seen one like it. I've Google searched a volcanic pumice Aboriginal stone tool and nothing comes up, guys. So this could be the only one in existence. I've found other ones too, guys. I've, uh, no, it's packed away, uh, but not like this, but I've found other pumice, volcanic, Aboriginal stone tools, but this is definitely the most beautiful Aboriginal stone tool that I've ever found in my life. And it's probably used for, possibly for um, ochre, for uh, making paint, face painting, for the traditional ceremonies, or possibly even seed grinding. It's absolutely amazing, guys. It's light as a feather. And this rock here, guys. And that's also an Aboriginal stone tool too. But that, I didn't find this little round one with this one. But that's absolutely amazing. Anyway, guys, I found this out the old Dombiong rubbish dump and a lot of other Aboriginal artefacts and two beautiful meteorites I found out the old Dombiong rubbish dump as well. Um, I've done videos on it before guys, just go to my YouTube channel and enter meteorite and you should find it. It's a beautiful 500 gram meteorite. Uh, yeah, but like I say guys, I found a lot of teeth around the old Dombiong rubbish dump possibly Aboriginal teeth or maybe homemade dental work by the early white settlers or the people in the 1900s. As I say guys, it's the most beautiful Aboriginal stone tool. I've never ever seen one like it. And it's floated on top of the water from Antarctica probably and landed on the shores of southern West Australia and it's been traded amongst the other Aboriginal people. And it's come all the way to Dombuyong, 250 k's away from the coast, 250 kilometres. Yeah, I've always wondered when I'm digging up like places like old rubbish dumps guys if I ever come across an old body you know just never know what's in those old rubbish dumps guys buried bodies and Aboriginal bodies skulls bones no doubt there would be buried people out you know all these old rubbish dumps because they used to be uh, hunting grounds for and where people used to live guys or Aboriginal people so no doubt there would be a lot of bodies buried out, not just Dombiyong, but a lot of other country rubbish dumps all around Western Australia, guys.
best way to dispose of someone, I think, wouldn't it be, guys? Burying someone out in a landfill or a rubbish dump. A lot of murder victims get buried in these landfills. So what we're going to do now is... Uh, right here, guys, I've got a... Uh, or this saw sitting on a tarp. So I'm going to lift up this tarp and get the rest of this uh, soil. And I've got heaps more beautiful soil out the back of my yard too, but I'll also bring out. Now we'll do this side. See the beautiful concrete sink. It's going to look awesome, guys, when we get it all established. Getting there. And more teddy bear fluff from Banjo. Whatever you do, guys, don't let your dogs rip up teddy bears. This stuff will never, ever decompose. It's poison, it's toxic, guys. You don't even want to breathe in the fibres because it floats in the air like dust.
So also guys, just so you know, I mean it's on a pretty deep angle. I can also lay logs along here. And up here, just to build the soil up and bury the logs in the soil. It's kind of, it's called Hugel culture. It's not the proper way, but it's something they do in Germany, in Europe. Hugel culture, H-U-G-E-L-K-U-L. T-U-R, I think, Hugel culture. Uh, it's where you grow vegetables, but you literally bury uh, the very bottom of the soil in logs, cover those logs in soil, and eventually it turns into a beautiful organic compost, beautiful for growing uh, vegetables and so forth. But this would be kind of like Hugel culture, but not the proper way, but just a good way of setting up my... Uh, uh, fixing up this steep angle here. Another witchy grub, another black dung beetle grub. To be honest with you guys, I don't really like the angle that much. It looks way too steep. So I'm going to have to build up that saw there. Maybe with logs. Just to the left in between the concrete sink and the plastic pond in liner. I need to build that up somehow. With logs. It's just way too steep. I've got nowhere where the rocks aren't going to sit on top of that plastic liner properly. I don't think. But it'll all come together. I know a good place where I can source uh, logs, guys. From Dale's place, possibly. Otherwise, what I'll do is go out bush looking for fallen down trees. And cut them into lengths. And uh, do that. As long as those fallen down trees are freshly fallen and they don't affect any wildlife. But usually when the trees fall, wildlife will make homes out of the fallen trees. But you're allowed to do it guys. It's, it's uh, legal to cut wood for firewood and so forth. steep here. It's too steep.
That's a lot of saw there, guys. It's a fair bit of soil. It's really, really high. Probably doesn't look as high as what it does when I'm looking at it without looking through the camera, but it's uh, pretty high. Probably about three, four foot high. But it's going to look beautiful when it's all covered in native grasses and native iris, bulrush, shrubs, etc. And also, too, guys, that soil will eventually settle down it'll get a lot lower once everything gets wet from the rain and stuff decomposes in the soil so it'll definitely reduce in size over a period of a couple of years Just gonna put some more soil on this side. Check out that beautiful concrete sink. I'm not satisfied with it, guys, with that end there, with this end. Alright guys, my camera's just about to go flat. I'm going to end it now, but anyway, the only way I think I can fix it is either digging up the pond, removing the pond again and digging a deeper hole, or uh, putting a log, some logs like this here, building some logs up here. But anyway guys, I appreciate you watching. My battery is just about to die. 
and uh, thanks for watching guys so we'll see you in the next couple of days for part um, five thanks for watching everyone and what I'm going to do right now is uh, fix up this tarp get rid of all that soil and I'm going to water these trees in native grasses and uh, just tidy up the area here and I'll uh, try and work out a way of how I can fix this here because it's just too steep see it's really really steep guys thanks for watching everyone and uh, we'll see you next time